How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Blue Shitting. Welcome back to Rewrite, where uh, I think we're approaching the end. Um, if there's any heralds to the fact that we're running into the end of the game, finally. It's taken forever. Not that it's a bad thing, but it's taken a while. But the indications that are saying that are, one, uh, Kultur has admitted that he's becoming more and more of a familiar and is practically out of life force. So even if he lives past this fight and manages to win, his lifespan is probably down to maybe a year or two at this point, I'm guessing. Like, pretty much gone. So there we go, that's cool. That, actually, no, it's not cool, it sucks. Secondly, he officially had to fight best and kill Asaka, who was like the only friend he had, really. Like, his only real friend. I guess you can kind of think of the kids he saved as kind of friends, but again, he never saw himself as a friend. He saw himself as a liability to them. He just wanted to give them a life and he helped and use their talents to try and further his goals. Kagari might count as a friend, but she's complicated. Um, and even Kotori, who was kind of a friend, he always tried to brush off and ultimately, like, killed her familiar parents and drove her away. So, yeah, no. Asaka was probably the only friend he had, really. And he had to kill him himself. So, yeah, I, I, I can't think of any other indications that we are in for the big haul and this is going to be the spectacular conclusion, whatever it is. So, I think the next goal is to try and take out the choir that's singing the Song of Destruction because the song is kind of forcing Kagari to, like, assume her, like, end of the world form. So, we gotta stop that. So, I think that's what's happening now. But, yeah. It's, uh... Last episode was rough. It was emotional. I was very sad and depressed afterwards. Like, I had been planning to record two videos that day just to try it, because I was, like, running out of time. But I had to stop. I absolutely had to stop and just... You know, just move forward. And so, here we are. Now, I don't know what else is gonna happen here. Don't know how long this episode's gonna go. Um, I'm bad at guessing. Uh, with this game especially, my scale for time is very tough for me to judge. I sometimes think it's going to be the end and it goes on for another 10 episodes. And other times I thought we had a long to go, a while to go and suddenly it was over. So we're going to have to just go for it. Wish me luck. All right, let's start. It wasn't until the teams were already in the forest that the Guardian realized their communications band had gotten jammed by a powerful signal, which effectively cut off contact with Commander Asaka. Shimizu, left in command, had to make some big decisions. He couldn't dispatch messengers, but he didn't know where, to, where anyone. He could dispatch messengers, but he didn't know where anyone was. Most of the monitors just showed static too. He sends up a signal flare, but there's no response. He gets a rookie to go out and do some scouting at the very least. Thirty minutes later, the rookie returns missing an arm. Fetch. <laughs> Holy crap. There's no ordinary familiars. This herd of defective creatures is weaker on an individual level when it comes to attack power. Oh, is it those weird blood-sucking worms or something? The primordial familiars are dull-minded primitives and amorphous. Spooky, chaotic beasts. If they see a living creature, they will swar uh, swarm it like zombies and devour it. Even though most of them don't even have a proper digestive system. Originally, they were the organic matter of the forest, trees, flowers, and leaf mold. Originally, uh, ordinarily, generations must pass for new life to be born, life that is sustained by secondary food sources. All of that is out the window now. Is this the picture of hell drawn by Kashima Sakura? She's in in inducing the entire forest to turn into familiars. Oh my gosh, she's just weaponizing nature. I mean, that's what they always do, but like, she's literally, she's essentially doing what the Ents do in Lord of the Rings when they wake the trees and march them to take out the army after, at Helm's Deep. Strictly speaking, they're not familiars. They are manifestations of life energy. The Song of Destruction is essentially the same thing as the workings of the Force that brings about re-evolution. While its power output is incredibly weak in comparison, it, pres it pre uh, pressures organic matter to actively change. Familiars, life that's not quite life. They move about wildly, despite their lack of any decent metabolic system. That's how all life is first born into the world. Oh, that's an interesting theory. That first life is almost forced into existence. That's a fun idea because there's always that 
gap connection where we understand the form life took as pretty early on, but there's a gap between the earliest life we are aware of through fossil records and what must have been the beginning of life. We don't really know what that connection is quite yet. Maybe someday. A scared phenomena that has occurred on Earth countless times. A sacred, not scared. I'm scared. Sacred phenomena. However, in this case, in the case of the human race, it's more like an evil calamity. Shimizu has a very good sense of human values. He promptly takes command, grasping the facts of the situation. This is to say, the fact that the entire forest is turning into a danger zone. That alone, he accepts logically. At this point in time, Shimizu considers the most of the team he sent to the woods to be killed in action. He doesn't want to accept that Asaka, a man he'd known for many years, is dead, but he forces himself to. In that sense, as a soldier and a commander, Shimizu's capability leaves nothing to be desired. Currently, part of the forest has started to swallow up urban areas, injuring ordinary citizens. The scene of mass is a mass confusion, only sh and only Shimizu, who is qualified to give orders, maintains peace of mind. Presence of mind. Gaia's rash behavior, Guardian's limited team of staff, Shimizu decides not to dispatch a rescue team into the woods. I think he's going to focus on civilians, that's just probably for the best. As I suspected, Kagari is being affected by the song. At almost the same time as the forest transformation into familiars, her feet and calves start to unravel into what look like plant roots. She can no longer walk on her own. Her ribbons are lifeless too, she has no way of moving besides crawling with her arms. I lay Kagari down the hilltop and return to the city. If I don't stop the choir, Kagari will stay weak and confused. Gotta find it. The city's full of people running around trying to escape. Every single person is dashing here, there, and everywhere. <clears throat> Guy and familiars are positioned at all exits and major roads out in the train station. Dang, they're literally trapping people. As the people try to escape the city, they come face to face with that fact. Left with no means of escape, they succumb even more to their fear. I understand what Gaia is doing. They are, these are steps taken to ensure no one comes close to the temple where Kashima Sakura is. It's nothing more than a stopgate measure. Her plan is to destroy the world and she's buying time by using the chaotic mob of people and the familiars as shields. Communications are cut off, the organizational cooperation is, organizational cooperation is broken. Even if some people could manage to break through the surging crowd, they'd only find, end up crushed one by one in combat with familiars that lay beyond. And I'm no exception. While I'm trying to think of an approach that wouldn't be a suicide mission, several superhumans surround me. All familiar faces. They part to reveal one person in particular behind them. He's livid. It's written all over his face. Hey, uh, Imamiya? Got bigger fish to fry, don't we? It's a hold up, plain and simple. I put my hands up and surrender. With my hands tied behind my back, I've been taken to the provisional outdoor command post and brought before Shimizu. My treachery must be well known because everyone looks equally cold. And when I say everyone, I mean only about 10 people or so. Every single act active unit has dozens of more people than this. With communication all fragmented, they can't assemble everyone. I get punched. And not the kind of punch you'd give a comrade in arms, not anymore. I get kicked. His rough interrogation style reveals his impatience. I like that answer. One called Tenoji Kotaro. Kotaro, I guess he says Kotaro. I get punched again. Jesus,どの道死ぬなら楽に死にたいとは思わないのか？まだ死ねない。なんだと？あいつに見せてやらないと。何を言っている？この星の可能性、良い記憶を。Shimizu exchanges glances with, with his subordinates. He sounds mad. They shake their heads as if to say they have no idea. He takes out a knife. 
ちょっといいっすか除名の嘆願なら危険ぞいや確認っす天王寺よくも長いこと騙してくれちゃったりしやがりましたねそれは本当に悪かった聞きたいことしかねえくらいだけど時間ねえしなおっちの前に一つだけ教えてくださいよおめえ一体何だったの I've been asking myself that same question for a long, long time. I start to laugh. Nani, what are you doing? Tori sogi korozo! Uh, I'm sorry, Mamiya, but I'm actually pretty sure I'm beyond you now. I look up at him and laugh. He is! <laughs> He fulfilled it! Mamiya's face darkens, either with rage or scorn. I use my wrist cutter to snip through the cords, tying my hands behind my back. Even Mia's attention isn't on, isn't on what's right in front of him, and I sweep his legs out from under him. Without sparing a glance at Even Mia, and he tumbles over, I leap over the cars. Nishi Kyujo, who's keeping watch from a distance, throws a knife at me. Fe figuring she's aiming for the base of my skull, I defend myself with my right hand, and the knife lodges straight into it. It actually really helps me out here with that her throwing aim is, so, is too good. I land on the ground and sprint away at top speed. <laughs> Aww. Sorry, Nishi Kyujo. You are the best of them. Absolutely. That Nishi Kyujo used, used a pretty good knife. I will gratefully accept this. Actually, he wasn't. He was. He just took a while to push himself this hard. Evacuation rush hour continues for Kazumatsuri residents. With every escape route blocked, all I can do is, after running out of energy, is run around, hold up, and cower somewhere. Indeed, evacuees have flooded public use facilities like schools, gyms, and community centers. But they're also, they've, they've also branched out into trespassing on fenced-in private properties and office buildings, all packed to the gills. Even if you slip past the stampeding hordes, the familiars lie in wait next. With things like this, I can't think of any other way to the temple but the underground route. I look up at the sky. He did find out recently about the school. I wonder if he'll try there. Appa appallingly, gigantic flying familiars are drifting brazenly through the sky. Gaia means business. Unexpectedly, the area around the underground route entrance is left defenseless. Not a single guard is posted. Guardian must know about the underground route too. And Kashima Sakura must already have anticipated they would know about it. Yeah, probably the Earth Dragon. I'm about to just go in and dive in anyway, but that would be throwing my life away. I could send my familiars out ahead of me, but I realize that I've actually got the perfect team for the job of clearing the way so I conceal myself temporarily. No less than five minutes later, an active unit from the organization from the organization rolls up in a car. Even me and Nishikyojo are part of it. They're fully equipped. Even carrying guns. They split off into teams of four and head underground. I follow after them, taking care not to get spotted. Aw, oh, that's... That's good, but that sucks. <laughs> like, oh, just, yep, they'll come through here. And they'll either try and attack uh, Gaia or they're looking for me. Either way, they can be uh, the advanced guard and they can they can take the hit and set off the trap so I know what I'm dealing with. A half-built subway station. At the moment, the construction plans are suspended. The project is under the Martel Group's private control. The superhumans march onward silently through the total darkness. Before long, a, a frisson of tension ripples through them, starting with the vanguard and propagating back. Familiars were lying in wait there, and, they f and the fight has begun. I creep closer to them, figuring I won't arouse their suspicions now. Looks like they're pretty close fight. I squint to pick out of multiple di small dinosaur-like familiars wriggling about. They're emitting hazy glimmers of life energy. The only way to fight them with it is with enhanced eyesight. The light, or failing that, sensing them and following that trail. But they're speedy, and there's so many of them. Gunshots ring out intermittently. Flashlight beams flicker unsteadily. The first person goes down. The familiars will surge forward into the gap left in the uh, left in the group's defenses, and the entire team will be ripped apart. Hmm. I load a syringe into my blowpipe. From my rear position, I take aim, starting from what I judge to be the most dangerous ones. The familiars are pretty strong, and will keep fighting for about 30 seconds after a direct hit. By the time I've shot all my darts, the team is half destroyed. I slip past Mamiya, who's fallen on his butt and, sp and spring at one larger familiar. 
leaving a stride, a stride it and using my body weight to pin it down, I plunge my knife into its head. As soon as I see the disintegrating, I head immediately to the second one. After mopping up the familiars, there are only four survivors left. Three are uninjured. One is severely wounded, receiving emergency first aid. A flashlight beam lands on me. I don't have to follow it to see who's shining it. Even me and Nishikyujo are standing there looking confused. When I make to make to leave, Imamiya trains a shotgun on me. Imamiya is at a loss for words. Man, it sounds so lame when you say it like that, Kotaru. Hanata no shiteru koto ga doushite sekai heiwa ni tsunagaru to? Sekai heiwa no tame zanai. It's about propagation. It's about a hope that we can live beyond this planet. Tada, gake puchi de fumi todomaru tame da. Sekai ga heiwa ni naru ka dou ka wa omae tachi shidai. Oh, I like that. Whether we achieve world peace or not, it's up to you. I'm just trying to prevent us from toppling over the edge. Imi ne daro sore. なる先延ばしだ。かもな。けど、可能性のバトンは受け継ぐべきだ。欲しを救うってどういうこと?そうだな。知りたいはずだな。あの女の子の作戦参加を拒否して、代わりに志願したお前は知りたいはずだよな。
いいなその短絡的な判断俺らヤングはそうでなくちゃなマジだっつうの構えてみろはナイフ戦だよ構えてみろ Wait, what? Rock the lady and Mia hands his gun to Nishi Kyojo and grabs a knife in each hand. Kun l e n s e no t o k i Ore wa koits de ichido mo omae ni kate na kata ndeo na. Kouge kyo o uke tome rale tara tetsu datte kure. Ikuzo. San. Ni. Ich. At zero, I move. Using my shoulder and elbows to wrench apart the two knives closing in on me at the same time, I slip my own weapon in. It's over in an instant. My knife is, at the, only, is, the, is the only one pressed against my opponent's neck. Even though I cheated, a win's a win. Aww. Again, Nishikyojo, I am. We are not getting out of this. Like, this was a one way trip. We knew it for a long time. Jenna. With a wave of my hand, I dash away as fast as my legs can carry me. A short burst of top speed, I vanish from their sight completely. I enter the temple grounds. I'm on my guard, but no familiars pop out. Surrounded by walls and completely out of sight, it should be the perfect inter inter interception zone. Yeah, this is weird. With so much going on, why is it dead here? I sneak into the temple. There's no one there. It's eerily silent. The choir must be up on the roof. The roof, where every possible sniper point would be a blind spot. With the num numerous powerful flying familiars overhead. If I climb up the wall, I'll just become a snack for them. The corridors are shuttered and locked if I step into the, I step into the atrium hall. From here, I can leap up to the top floor. Solemn voices fill this god godless temple like space. Oh, hello. This is gonna be fun. A huge magic circle is floating in the hall. Something enormous crawls out from the circular pattern. I think this is fate. Because the thing is that this thing was always scary. But well, we never ended up facing it, did we? We never had to. We had to fight the Cthulhu esque monster and the, the, the forest dragon, but never the earth dragon. It's the earth dragon. The symbol of Gaia, the destroyer of enemies that has absorbed hundreds of lives and gained its own intelligence. <laughs> My body thrums with the desire to fight. The tension feels good, causing me to break out a light sweat all over. The path that leads to victory is a hundred moves ahead, but not that, but not cut off yet. Entirely naturally, I accept the possible vision of, of the future. This is probably going to be my last possible rewrite. But right here, right now, I must completely destroy this one familiar. Aw oh, man. His last one. We're literally gonna be teetering on the edge of humanity. It seems the familiar's pretty chatty. In that case, I am curious to hear what he says. It's funny because, like, they call him Earth Dragon. It actually feels like an apt name. Dragons being ancient beings of essentially magic that, you know, have this massive incarnate wisdom. You know, it's like, yeah, that fits. My mind is a swirling vortex. I still have some life energy left, only a little, but it's there. I draw it up and drink it down. Only a land, a ladle full remains. I don't care anymore. It's the point of no return. I've long gone way past it. I love the voice they gave him. Like, I know it's mostly just a down pitch, but like, it still sounds great. My rewrite isn't finished yet. I keep the conversation going a little longer. Loud laughter booms through the hall. Oh, so he wants. 
It's so loud. It's great, but it's loud. But yeah, he, he's essentially saying that they have the freedom to feed him. He speaks like an ancient god, like a shrine god. But you are not alive. He sees himself because it's like he's an incarnation of like one of the mightiest hunters the world ever saw. So he vibes with that idea. That's actually the perfect description for him. The selfish outsider. Oh, you can see that, huh? And knew the whole time. What streams out of my right arm is no longer red blood. A reddish green mass with a dull glow. My life forced itself. So he's a pro he's hit Aurora level. Numerous sharp tipped vines sprout from the sides of many of my joints. Oh, he's turning into a tree too. Like the scorpion's tail, they move freely. They will fight for me instead of uh, instead of my uh, almost useless right arm. By way of a hello, I lash out with an attack. Calmly, the dragon swings its tail at me. Leaping high to avoid it, I cartwheel to the momentum and shoot my vine blades out. With a downward strike, I attack the symbol of Gaian ideology. So, the Earth Dragon is the symbol of Gaian ideology, and Asaka was the was the um, uh, icon, the, the represent representative of Guardian. Oh, we don't actually get to see the fight. Ah. I kick out with all my strength and kick the uh, kick the thick wall, and the other side collapses. Instead of my bitten off right foot, I control uh, I control the sea of blades like spiders' legs to scramble up and onto the roof. Uta. So he's lost his right foot, but survived the fight. And when he did his last rewrite, his arm essentially like seized up his right arm, and so now he has all these like vine-like blade, vine-like vines that are acting almost like the ribbons that Kagari uses. He's kind of turning into a pseudo Kagari, while she's turning into a pseudo tree. It's very interesting and very symbolic. It reminds me a lot of like all the entwining stuff that happened, like Kotaru, um in uh, Sisaru's ending he kind of transformed into a tree that's how he lived on essentially echoing exactly what um sakuya became when he turned into a familiar he turned into a tree it seems like that's kind of what the ultimate end is for a pseudo living familiar that kind of exchanges its life force they turn into a tree which is interesting the song has stopped all is calm the world of white made up of only of tears of of tightly packed slabs of clear glass there aren't even any seats for an audience. On the highest floor, women clad only in white fabric lie face down on the ground. Is he too late? They're all dead. More than a hundred of them. Did they take turns singing until they ran out of energy and died? There's only one single two plain uh, uh, and chair, evidently the throne. A fatigue, a figure as thin as a willow sits atop it, a hood pulled low over her eyes. There's no reply, so I move closer. The old woman's none other than Kashima, uh, Kashima Sakura. Dead. A breeze of futility whistles through my mind. <laughs> what I've accomplished may have been all for naught. The song of destruction triggers ruin. The world is still safe thanks to Kagari's will. However, have I ultimately made it in time? I inspect the bodies and find only one still breathing. Miss Iko. Aw, man. Hanasemaska. Iko san. Anata. What's left of him? Iko-san 
でももうみんな私、really? 殺してしまった、really? 最初は事故だったドアに挟まってでも静かになったそのご遺体を見ていたら、oh, interesting. まるで救われた気がして I, I don't know what to say to this Blood leaks from her nose and lips. An extremely thin flowing stream of blood. Devoid of the color of life, it looks like water. So, I don't know. 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 I d o n o w You know, eliminated. Oh. oh, is she still around though? We might actually have to go after her. ねえ。教えて世界はどうなってるの空はどんな色をしているまだ青いまだまだ青くて汚れていて悲しくて残酷な世界だよ I'm sorry くそ Dang it you have to, He said I forgot so much and nothing It's like it didn't even matter もう何もかも彼れ寸前だけどもう一世代だけ送り出す力を残してる失敗かあかちゃんこっち側に連れ戻しといた方がいいかな Suddenly Miss Aiko drops into a crouch and lets out a low groan Losing the strength to hold herself upright She curls up tight like a wire is pulling her in and shivers She's dead. Dead in my arms, and not because of me. Come on, man. We gotta do something. I run. I launch myself off the roof. I land by crashing into the ground so one lung bursts. Inside my body, I make a hastily formed substitute organ. Air bubbles get into my blood vessels and my heart momentarily stops. I create valves around it, forcing it to beat. I spit, I spit up blood or whatever, it doesn't matter. While performing those procedures, I chop the walls and floor of the temple apart to drop underground. Sheesh, dude. He's ripping himself apart. Like, not even like his familiar state. He's just ripping himself apart out of anguish, the city of stone. I'm amazed I managed to find a transition in my day state. There are people here. A group of them dressed like pilgrims. From a distance, they stare at me. Strangely, they show no surprise at my appearance. Wordless, wordlessly, silently, dispiritedly. <laughs> No one answers. From the crowd, one person steps forward. Uh, you gotta remember who Gaia is. These are people who literally gave up. Another person comes forth. Man, woman, old, young. All of them agree. They heard the song of destruction. Their sorrowful voices are、uh, of those who see the apocalypse as salvation. 
生き残りたいものは誰も Their silence speaks volumes. No. Doesn't look like they're gonna hand over Akane. But I could kill them and take that, just take Akane with me. But do I have to do that? Kill her too? Just as I've just already betrayed by many of my friends? A little mur ru uh, murmur runs through the crowd. The sea of people parts, and a girl steps out in front of the adults. But remember, Sakura planted herself in her, so. <laughs> Aww. We worked really hard to save you, Akade. I immediately, the surrounding adults grab her and try to push her back further in. A man in the way shoves a knife into my face, without faltering at all, as if he has nothing to be has he's not afraid of death. I dive into the middle of the crowd. I grab the girl and hold her to my chest. Multiple screams rise up. Who are you gonna call? The police? <laughs> Turn around and retrace my steps. Someone grabs my foot from behind. If it were one or two people, it'd be fine, but an entire herd is hot on my heels. They grab my hair, pull my sleeves. Heedless, I keep moving forward. We approach the door. But with just one step left to go, the crowd's strength prevails. The door closes before my eyes. Kashima Chakra's trap was, was to sever the man-made afterlife from the real world, turning it into a transient world. Beneath my shout, Akane lets out a wordless scream. Her voice sounds like a full of hope and power as life itself. Perhaps that's why a miracle occurs. Well, it was Sakura's power, so maybe Akane can undo it. Someone pushes me from behind. With the power of three people behind it, by the narrowest of margins, we're snapped into the other side. Through some property of the gateway space, we shake off the crowd's hands. I turn to look back. The other side closes off. I see the face of my father. Mother. Oh my gosh, really? They're in there? Really? Oh gosh. And Sukuno. And Sukuno? <sighs> Were they the ones that pushed? Was Sukuno the one that pushed? Who was the one that got him out? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Can you imagine after all that, the last thing you see are like the last people in Gaia who you might have cared about. His parents, who were pretty terrible parents to be fair, but still. And then his old teammate who became the protector of Akane. And I bet you she's the one. I bet you in to, to save Akane, she was the one that pushed. When I come to, I'm squatting in the middle of the path. My chest feels hot. By the way, I see this background, I know. It's begun. The heat isn't from my heart. It's from Akane's body heat. My heart, my body's already starting to get cold. My memories are a mess. I still have a job to hurry and do, right? I feel heavy all over, like there's a lead rock, uh, rod stuck, struck, uh, stuck in my body. Oh right, I did have something left. Ugh, I can't take it easy yet. She nods emphatically. She looks confused. Yeah, like what? You're just gonna leave her here? Fetch me, man. Take her back to Kothari or something. A short time later, four large familiars come flying down from the rooftops. With big round eyes, Akane reaches out and touches one of my mammoth familiars. Instantly, she seizes the contract line with the four of them. She's awesome. She puffs out her chest proudly. That's my girl! Nice. <laughs> still Kotaru, even when he's like half like dead? 
I relinquish control of the familiars and hand them over to Akane. He makes a short, hoarse sound. He's teaching her to say, Help me. よし。それなら、あとは気合と目で訴えれば何とかなるな。もう一度言うぞ。お前はこれから安全な場所に行って、一番優しそうな奴を見つけて、そいつに助けてって言え。ただし、ロリコンは除く。いや、わかったな。その
The promise. The promise that kept him going. The promise that fueled all these horrible decisions he made. You know, it's funny because here's the thing. A lot of us are skeptical of religion, and I think for very good reason. A lot of us wrestle with what's the purpose of life, right? Not the purpose, the purpose. But if you think about it, what is it that's at the core of every dogma in all of existence, if you really dig into it, down, down, down to Hellenic, like the Greek gods, to uh, the Mesopotamian uh, stories, down deeper and deeper, back to the barest roots of humanity we've been able to scratch and be able to find records of for belief. What is it that clung to? What is it that helped people move? That might have been even possible uh, motivation for establishing society and culture and, and all of it. It wasn't just survival. It wasn't just trying to like make it like a community. I think it was this hope. A hope that goes beyond everything. All things. It transcends it all. And it's ultimately this hope. It's a hope and a prayer and a dream that when we die, we don't stop. That there's more to it than just the cruel life and the struggle and the pain. That someday we'll meet again and stand in front of each other and we'll find that we are just as happy as we always dreamed we could be. Whether it's real doesn't really matter, does it? Because if that hope can motivate us, it can make us do some of the most incredible things we've ever accomplished throughout all of human history. We've done terrible things in the name of religion, but I think at, a, at its core, the true gem of what made religion so compelling, what makes society so compelling, what makes hope and, 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 and civility and friendship and love work is the dream that we don't have to say goodbye. That someday, we meet again and it comes together and we can be one that's what the dream is he's the culture is saying it's for the Kagari, but i like the idea that this was something he planted into like the core of human humanity the core of everything was this human fragment this tiny piece of humanity that's so intrinsic to each of us that it became the core of who he was and whom we are Someday we'll meet again. A hope and a promise that might not ever be fulfilled. A volume of words that could, would destroy the consciousness of a flesh and blood human instantly. I, as I am now, I can take it all in. Information of a higher order. To be honest, that doesn't mean I understand all of it. But beyond that message I've been sent, I can feel someone's warmth. Which makes sense. She didn't try to destroy the planet out of malice. She simply tried to do the most obvious thing for life to do. She tried to survive. For those who live on the moon, the earth, and beyond, while undergoing the extraordinary trial and error process, utilizing tools known as destruction and resurrection, and the theory is complete. It was entrusted to me. The fragile, weak, singular individual that is me. Torches to guide the way imprinted deep in our genes. That's what I followed to make it here. Yeah, it's that concept. That's exactly what they're trying to say. Passing through agony and humiliation, carrying on loneliness and loss, escaping danger numerous times. I don't think for myself as saddened. Uh, I don't think of myself as saddened with a painful fate. <laughs> I chose that way. It reminds me, what's the Frank Sinatra song? Um, I made it my way. That's the path I chose. And the next torch is almost right before me. The final uh, finale at last, huh? Fetch me. It's going to be today, isn't it? All right, then. I'm going to do it. I'm going to execute the theory and get the results. Not because anyone asked me to. I'm going to carry out the mission I signed myself. I'll face it head on, along with a glimmer of the last moments of my life. When I come to, I'm soaring through the sky above the city with tremendous momentum. I'm mid-leap. In a single jump, I've crossed an altitude of several hundred meters. I don't know what form I've taken. It's probably no longer a human one, based on the abilities I've used so far. I mourn the loss of my handsome face, but I can't do much about it now. Ah, it feels so good, this breeze. I feel like I can keep soaring and go anywhere. If I had any life left, I could become anything I wanted. 
I'm capable of easily processing all sorts of odds and ends cast off by our genetics. But it's almost tragic. My lifespan is only, almost only that of a single human life. So this is as far as I go. And that's why they all bequeath this technology to everyone else. Wait. Is he going to literally, like, take this, like, inhuman information and plant it in the minds of humanity? Everyone? To the world. Oh, here we go. We've been building. We've been building to this. This has been the whole process. At some point, I've started walking. In a sudden change, my gait is heavy. My movements are stiff. I'm trying to run, but I'm going slower than a walk. I'm almost there. It's so close. I'm headed right for it. Where? An important place. Then I'm heading for a place that isn't important? I shouldn't be. Yes, I remember now. I'm following in a light. I'm a tiny little moth. Drawn by a pathetic little instinct to the light trap. It's no wonder humans have propensity to seek light. In this cruel dark world. I feel like I too have always been chasing it. But now I no longer can see anything. There's no light. But then, does that mean that this is my final destination? The empty place? Keep walking. I finally dragged myself to the place after throwing away everything in my life and bedded everything I have. I've succeeded to some degree. I've lived to some degree. I've fought to some degree. I don't think it's been meaningless. But just what have I become? My sense of duty hastened and hurried my life along. Was it... Was it enough? Joy? Reassurance? Nakata. Only pain. I betrayed so many things. Oh, it's getting dark. Including people I was meant to respect. I'm hot. The core of my body burns with unbearable heat. I take off my jacket. I take off my gloves. Uh oh. My hands are no longer hands. I'm already a familiar. It's like I turned myself into my own familiar. Because I'm awakened to my mission. The scene around me is growing blurry. I've lost almost all my eyesight. Is anyone there? A anyone? I'm losing my sense of self. Is anything, anyone waiting for me? It's hard to breathe. My mind's going blank. There's a huge hole in my chest. I can't remember my name. I can't remember anyone's name. I'm all alone. And, oh, there's a small flame burning in my heart. A tiny piece. I think to myself, ah, this is it. This is what I've been seeking. This warm thing that can guide me. Something so valuable. Yes. This is enough. My love for her. Aww. That's really sweet. The world rocks and shakes. Trees walk. The ground tremble. The sky cries. A combined chorus that engulfs the seven seas and whips up the entire thin layer that conceals the stars. Salvation. The world is melting down. From it, new life emerges. No. I thought re-evolution wasn't going to happen to you. Going to happen. Once fallen, getting back up will no longer be possible. That critical moment is where we, where we were, I, I thought. Kagari. Kagari! Suddenly, I see her. Oh my gosh! She's so pretty! Holy crap! No. Look at that! She's amazing! That hair looks crazy. She was right there the whole time. I just failed to see her. Arigato. She's got back her mind. Her voice echoes. <sighs> the good memory was him sacrificing himself to plant that piece of information, that hope in everyone's hearts. Aww. So ka. Mani atta no ka. Iye, zannen desu ga. Aww. あと少し早くこの世界を見ることができていれば、そうか間に合わなかったか無念だ。いいえ、
恥じることはありません一つの答えとしてあなたはよくやった方です、oh, she sounds so, like, mature now. 胸を張って最後の仕事を果たしなさいさあ What's that? Kakari opens her arms. My body moves of its own. I do my final job. Wait. No. Wait. But what's her final job? No. It's not what I'm thinking it is, right? We're, we're not gonna. We're not. Like, she's right here. She's so. In, she's smart. She's, she's brilliant. She's, she's just here, right? We're not gonna, like, make her go away. What's. Smile on her lips, Cockerty embraces me. This is really cute, too. My sword runs through, appearing to almost have grown out of her back. Oh my gosh, no! Surprisingly, I feel no resistance. But that's it. I committed the final act. <laughs> no. He really has to do this? This is what he has to leave. All of that, when the one thing that held his consciousness together was love for Kagari and his hope in the future, and this is what he has to do? It doesn't seem like my own decision. I've worked so hard for this whole time, all I could see is her. How can she smile like that when I've done something so terrible? Feels like it. No, it's not. No. That was in no way a person capable of loving others. But that didn't mean I hated everyone. The people I felt an understanding with, the people I found nice and likable, I betrayed them and sacrificed them all just to get here. I used their trust and emotions as fuel to get me all the way to this hilltop. To save Kakari. I left hope behind in the world all for her. But the only way to stop salvation was for me to take her and her alone. There's no way this could be a blessing. Kakari cups my face in her hands. Her eyes are clear as she gazes at me. Why? The very best memory, the one Kagari wished for. In the end, it was the power and the determination to blaze a trail into the future. That was something we as humanity were on the verge of giving up on. That was something people lost sight of in trying so hard to, ca to, to care for the planet. We were so desperate for it that we'd even consumed our, own, our one and only Mother Earth. We thought we'd expand it, we'd, we had to expand that badly. And that's why. Oh gosh, so he's saying that the. The drive to explore and expand and grow that was meant to be her, that was her trying to motivate us to like leave the planet, to find home and to keep, per perpetuate ourselves. Like a mother trying to keep her children happy and healthy and strong. But it pushed us so far that it was consuming all the resources too quickly. So in a way it backfired. It always backfired. Kagari has a gentle look on her face. That's why she looks like a mother watching her child leave the nest. だけど、あなたが頑張って本当に思い残すことはなくなりました。これで良かったのか。可能性は残されましたよ。そうか、俺はただあんたが気に入ってただけなのにな。気に入っていた。好きってことだ。ああ。決して<笑> <laughs> yeah, that's never stopped him before, though. So you skim water. Kono Kurai Basote. Anta Takega. Oh, my gosh, Kotaru. The joke in Mabuskata. Kisuki Masendista. Anta. Don't come back on. Yes, she is. The Kuarena, your moinado. Munashi Takeno has it. So the demo in the. Yeah. A hug grows tighter. Her voice trembles. Aww. At the very least, 
I hope the choices I made fumbling around in the dark could be a beam of light to the bright future for everyone. <laughs> Sorry, that's just what... I came to a realization a few years ago. I realized when I was facing a very scary medical problem. <sighs> and I knew if a surgery had gone wrong, I had a stomach surgery because I was really unhealthy. But it was the riskiest surgery I'd ever had. Highest risk of, of death. And when I was in the hospital, I panicked. But it wasn't because I was scared to die. <laughs> I was scared I was going to leave behind people who I still needed to care about. That there was so much I hadn't said and a thought that I wanted to do. <laughs> but it was the first time I realized I wasn't scared of dying. Because it wasn't the scariest thing anymore. And I always knew from that point on that if I can just leave a beam of light that somehow my work, my life, and my eventual passing would leave something good for people. Inspired family, friends, anybody. If anybody carried on and somehow made the world a little brighter because of something I did, then it'd all be worth every second of pain and, and fear and facing down even death and I just hadn't felt like I'd done it yet <laughs> and so it's I understand this I get it on a really core level fetch me I think it's a big change you go from when you're young feeling like the whole world is just gonna be there for you all the time that things are always going to be working out and there's always something to go your way. That the world's your oyster. And then you start, you go to school, you get a job, you start relationships, fall in love. And then you feel like there's so much to lose. And you have to work so hard just to keep something and to build something good. And then you have that just fear. The fear that it'll just be over. Like that. And you wonder, and you wonder, what have I even done? What am I doing with my time? And then... You just creep a little forward and you slowly start to get that realization that, you know, it's not dying that's scary. It's not leaving behind things. You don't want to leave them behind. You don't want to... You don't want... You want to make sure that when you go, that something good comes of it, right? And it's where I am now. I'm just desperate to, to know I did okay. <laughs> And it's not something you can hear from strangers or loved ones. I don't think it's even something you ever can know. Because how many people have left and not known just how powerful they'd be? I always think of Van Gogh. He spent his whole life pursuing a dream, seeing a world differently, and desperately trying to cling to hope. And it wasn't enough for him. But. Hundreds and hundreds of years later, his work inspires some of the greatest artistic minds of the world. He had no clue that he was changing everything with his work. And that's probably how most of us are going to feel. Fetch. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm sniffling so much. It starts really obnoxious. The rewrite. It's the title screen. Oh, is that what they become? That they become together a tree? Well, the core of life.
I'm sorry. <sighs> Come on, we got more. We got more. The train station is practically deserted with trains stopped. There was terrible confusion for a while, but everyone rushed for the familiars, overwhelmed them, and escaped. At some point, the familiars disappeared, too. Now it's almost peaceful. One woman stands in front of the station. Hand in hand with a little girl on either side, she stares ahead of her with a resolute determination. Yeah, I thought so. Nishi Kyojo and her two little adoptive daughters of insane power. One of the most powerful summoners in the world and one of the most powerful guardians in the world. <laughs> her large backpack bulges with all the water and food she can scrape together from the ruined city. She thinks about what to do next. She can't dispel the sense of depression. She's aware of the state of the globe, ru globe, uh, ru the the global ruin the world is in. She can't expect any salvation. If she were alone, she'd figure out so something out. But she had cha charges to think of. She had countless things to consider. But her thoughts are disrupted when she sens senses someone there. Faintly, she looks around. She discovers a little girl wearing a feather, feather, and peeking at them from a gap in the rubble. Vigilance is written all over her face. She must have witnessed her looting, uh, witnessed her looting that burn, have witnessed her looting that burning building. But then the intensity of her gaze also signals her desire for help. Oh, that's Akane. Their eyes meet. Fearfully, the girl steps out of the shadows of the rubble. The woman walks over and holds out her hand for, to her. The girl shows has some hesitation, but the other two little girls offer her a handkerchief and some bottled water. So that is that, uh, Kotari and Shizuru, and now Akane. In the end, she accepts them with tears in her eyes. All of them are injured. There are scrapes all over the woman's face, too. Her clothes are torn in places, and she's missing a shoe. That's not an uncommon sight in Kazumatsuri at the moment. But there's a fierce glow in her eyes, revealing her desire to live. Another girl. With the sound of rubble collapsing, and black-haired little girl tumbles into the plaza. Lu Lucia! She finally shows up! <laughs> now the woman has another little girl to protect. For a time, she feels immense, immersed in an ordinary yet wonderful daydream, which is that she really has become a teacher. Just as the woman is contemplating moving on, the black-haired girl lets out a sharp cry and points in one direction. There's only one left, huh? A new little girl has appeared. The woman is startled by four huge familiars that the girl is leading. Oh, so that's Akane. Wait, so then who is the, the girl in the, in, the, in the rubble? She steps in front of the four girls protectively, pulling her trusty knife out of her jacket and, wearing, and warily holding it ready. The little girl hides a familiar behind her back. She approaches slowly, her mouth open wide as her voice comes pouring out from deep in her belly. The five little girls have all survived. All thanks to the woman who led them by the hand. <laughs> With all the heroines, they get together. All the loves Kotaru experienced in the trial worlds. <laughs> Interesting, it's like a story. There once was a young man. Once upon a time, there lived a sap a sapling. So this is the story, like, the, the, the undertext is what's on this document here. But it's, like, being translated for us, too. He was a sensitive young man who suffered from the same problems of others his age. <gasps> it's the intro text! Every time we start the game! It didn't say this? Isn't this the story it said there? But then it's being translated. He was a fine person that suffered from a feeling of anxiety that every young... That, uh, that, every, uh, that every... The young has. Every young man has. <laughs> However, he was also a soldier. However, he was also a man of arms. He regretted pulling the trigger, but he had no god to pray to. He regretted pulling the trigger, but never bend the knee to the absolute. <laughs> he killed many. He made a heap of corpses. Up until the end, he refused to be seen in public because he knew how sinful he was. Oh wait, I'm guessing what it is is that this is the story in the book, but this might be the uh, the mod. I have a mod that's supposed to fix stuff, and maybe they do a translation that's a little more digestible. Up until the end, he refused to be seen in public because he knew how sinful he was. Conscious of the transgressions he made, he refused to appear in public to the death. As his successor, I must respect his wishes. I shall respect his wishes as I follow in his footsteps. Oh, it's Jasmine. I was about to say I was going to guess when I saw the name. However, I want you to know this much, but there's only one thing you should know. 
Right now the planet is wounded, exhausted. Now the planet's become bruised and exhausted. Everyone has lost the will to live, sinking deep into the depths of loss and despair. Everyone has lost their will to live, fallen into the slow of despondent and forfeiture. I can see why the translation was done. <laughs> However, there's still a glimmer of light that remains in the world. There's a single ray of hope that remains in the world. I was left by no that it was left by none other than he. He was he it was it was remained by no less a personage than him. Yeah, I can see again, that's probably what it is. This is probably the translation correction. You know, what? I'm going to stop reading the undertext. You can read it if you want, but I'm going to focus on the translation now that I kind of get what's happening. We were his comrades. In accordance with his will, we were released to the internet. This technology that has been monopolized by the privileged few. Now anyone can read this. Countries and organizations can do nothing to stop it. Most of those reading it will find it absurd. Leading research institutes will dismiss it as laughable. But we are convinced that this lone file and the one is the one and only way to save this planet. The last flicker of flame, compared to the ar comparable to the ar architectural and industrial revolutions, is, huma is, is in humanity's hands. It's deep within all of us all. With a vast sea of life. Therein sleeps goblins, dragons, beasts, angels, fairies, and gods. We can subjugate all of them. The era of myths will be coming. It may be blasphemous, sinful even. Even so, the planet will forgive our recklessness. Blessing, blessings to the child that tramples over their mother to journey forth. Yeah. I said it in a comment, but I was saying that like the happy memory that Cogity was looking for was essentially the Earth just wanting their ch its children, the humanity, intelligent life to exist beyond. I said it's like a parent. A parent wants to see their children flourish and get their own house and start their own family because it means that when their time comes, that the ones they cared for will continue on and that the line will continue. That desire for you know, watching your progeny continue, that's what the planet wanted. It didn't necessarily want to survive. It probably knew it couldn't survive, but it hoped that parts of life on Earth would be able to expand and never die out, even if the planet did. <laughs> For it is not a sad memory. It is a path of light. It is the only hope that will lead to a bright future. <laughs> but we must never forget. The path was paved by a single, nameless soldier. I hope that this story will be passed from generation to generation for thousands of years. Gratia Domini Nostri Cum Omnibus Vobis. The, the grace of our Lord be with you all. Jasmine, 2015. That probably means we're not in a great timeline, though, are we? <laughs> the planet imposed cruelty on the people. The climate has changed drastically. There's been a dramatic drop in food production. There's a lack of habitable places. The second coming of the Ice Age. Summer as a season has vanished. The methodologies that flourished until now are useless. Whether they like it or not, people have no choice but to search for new technology. Those books and materials that were released online immediately spread all over the globe. The technology that uses life energy itself as fuel. The technology to use familiars by utilizing life energy. The technology that consumes life energy to enhance the body. Reactions are mixed. Some take this groundbreaking technology and begin researching it, while others start looking for people with talent. Some are scared to consume their life energy, while some are afraid of the few who hoarded this technology. But it doesn't take long for everyone to realize that it's necessary for survival. One, one technology researched worldwide over the networks that remain. All to survive. The technology develops in no time at all. The revolution of the world and the revolution of the self. People gossip about the young prisoners described in the research notes. No, pioneers, not prisoners. They call them torchbearers. Aw, oh, that's cool. Reconstruction begins. The days of just sitting around the ground exhausted are long gone. 
People have smiles on their faces as they dedicate themselves to the designated roles. The young take the initiative to carry lumber while the old share their knowledge and teach children in roofless, in roofless schoolhouses. No one feels sorry for themselves. It's interesting because it's kind of like it's a reset, but it's like a blend of old and new technology. They still have like an internet, but they have like crude houses. It's interesting. Even though it's a harder way of living than it was before, life returns to normal. But it's a drastically different normal than before. You even see glimpses of things that are not humans in the city. Seasons change. People scurry around preparing for winter. Even now, no one talks about how we have to protect nature. They are too focused on surviving to look back and reflect on anything else. They cut down trees, expand fields, and divert rivers. They burn firewood and oil. Even if it will pollute the environment, people need fire after all. One day, when there's nothing left to burn, their life energy will have to depart from this world. But that time is a little further ahead yet. Seasons pass. A huge tree towers over the hilltop, which is now a place where no one ever comes. It's breathing with vibrancy, rich and deep with green leaves. The tree is so massive it's hard to believe its size. In a short time, it grew to the tallest in the forest. It's still growing even now. There's a little rumor in, t in town about the tree. The giant tree leads directly to the moon. And its gigantic trunk creaks, it points like a compass to the entrance to the moon. Some people who witnessed the for forest encro uh, encroaching on the city before believed the tree should be cut down for that reason. But that's ridiculous. Even a few voice that suggestion, it's dismissed immediately with a laugh. Of course that tree's branches aren't trying to stretch all the way to the moon. Well, it might be, but... Look at that. Civil civilization continues. <gasps> oh my gosh, we're gonna see them all like, like young adults, right? We're gonna see them as they were? Aww. And she, hi, uh, yeah, she must have been there. I couldn't tell which one she was supposed to be. But, yep, she's there. Profit? <laughs> oh my gosh. So she is kind of the holy woman, but she's like a new form. <laughs> yep, they have. <laughs> yep. <laughs> of course they are. Oh! Uh, this can't be a thumbnail, but my gosh, burn it in your memories. Look at them. Why are they wearing their the school uniform still? Like, shouldn't all of that be gone now? Whatever, I don't care. It's too cute. Look at them all. Yeah. I know, I was just thinking that, Lucia. <laughs> Agreed. Why? Uh? Yeah. Are they gonna somehow... Oh! Remember how he's so familiar in the end? I remember I said that he was gonna follow the footsteps of Sakaya? What if that's what's gonna happen here? What if they're gonna bond him as a familiar and he's gonna be able to come out of the tree as his young, like, spunky, but super powerful self as a familiar? Yeah, yeah. Not that you're much better, it seems. <laughs> oh, that's the first time I've seen him. Yeah, I'm sure you don't have the Oh, the occult research society lives on. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> and Kotori is the founder. Yeah, 
<笑>バレたら投下先生の折感は免れない。ミストーカ。どの道この辺りの大木日照問題とかで伐採されるんだからいいと思うが。これだけ大きいと仕方ないですよね。3年で時効500メートルか。だいぶ。That's やろやろ。よし、囲め囲め、ものども。いいのができますように。今度こそパーフェクトに決めてみちゃうわ。What are you going to do? Oh my gosh, it is it's so cute. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to go. Huh. And look at the the wheels here. We haven't seen the wheel for so long. So <laughs> Yeah. It's the Liam and look at it! He is Sakuya. He's like a new Sakuya. Oh that's so cool. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it. After all, I'm, I'm used to reading for him. <laughs> Fetch. I'm... Yeah, he's here with them. Why are you the one saying that? Ah. Oh. It's nice seeing her happy though. I was the chief of the class. I was the chief of the class. I was the chief of the He's coming with all the memories of all the routes. Jitsua. その当人であることを隠しておきたかったルチアの悲しい老いたちに触れた。I like <笑> あの時の俺は女心ってのが分からない奴だったな。いや。いや、言うてんです。これは俺にとっては良い記憶だ。言葉は理解できてますかああ。それでこの子が千早。大鳥千早。been a while since we've like had a lot of interaction with you. You like Chihaya and Lucia just had no appearance at all in like the the Super Terra run. Tenkoseitoshite,うちのクラスに入ってきた。出会った頃は随分嫌われていた気がする。それも一緒に過ごした時間が解決してくれた。そんな俺たちは新たな問題に直面することになる。<笑> ミドを始めとしたガイアの魔物使いに狙われたんだ。いや。死闘を繰り広げる中、俺は千早や咲也との信頼関係を築いていった。It's cool. So he's ガイアの暴走も阻止することができたのだと思う。何度も拳を交えた結果、ライバルたちはみんな、得がたい親友となった。これも、俺にとっての。よ。ああ、しか言えないのだろうか。この子は、That's rich cover from you! It is rich coming from you. 
いい子だ。Oh, yeah, サンマが大好きで、風紀委員をやってる。The Sai, of course, Sai comes up. そして、ガーディアンのエージェントでもあった。Just, spy, she was awesome. 監視という名目ではあったが、大好きな女の子との同居生活に、俺は浮かれまくっていた。He's remembering that he liked all of them. That's gonna make things awkward. That one has one of the saddest endings. Yeah. これも俺にとっての良い記憶だ。I always latch onto this good memory stuff, like the good memories. 生まれたばかりならこんなもの。I wonder actually, maybe, maybe like the good memory stuff, maybe that's implying that he and、uh, Kagari kind of fused. I wondered if that might have happened with the tree. Maybe they're technically like the same entity now, or at least parts of her are parts of him now. There she is. Senpai Kohai to you, Kankeo, Hotondo Taikan Stekonaka, Orenito, Ichiban Chikashi, Joku, say. Yeah, yeah. Iroiro to Mewak Mokaketana, Sonobun Kopidok Hurima Sareta. Yeah, she did. だからまあお互い様ってところか<笑>彼女はガイアの聖女とされていた人だだけど彼女自身が世界を滅ぼしたいと考えていたわけじゃなかった Yeah, if there's any like hitch in Sakura's plan it was that the next heir that she chose Akade had was not a hundred wasn't committed to the destruction of the world 魔物の性質である変革の力を持って怨念を時代に押し付けていく。そう、受け継がれた絶望を胸に、なすすべなく生きるほかなかった人だ。誰かが支えてやらねばいけなかった。そして、茜を支えるということは、共に罪を背負う。That's an expression. That's an expression I don't know if we've ever seen on Akane before. Just genuinely just having fun, being happy. 俺は、それをやったんだ。結局、世界を存続させることはできなかったけど、yeah. 穏やかな余生を与えることはできた。<笑>俺は英雄じゃないから、すべてを救うことはできない。わかりやすい幸せではなかったけど、それでも、俺たちにとっては、精一杯の人生だったんだ。これも、俺にとっての良い記憶だ。名前の希望とかあるあ、oh, here she is! そして小鳥だ。カンベ小鳥。小鳥。小鳥は、のほほんとしたところのある、普通の女の子だ。だけど、たくさんの悲しみを一人で背負って、泣き言一つ言わずに生きていた。Yeah, どこまでも抱え込んでしまうような女の子でもある<笑>そんな小鳥と俺は切っても切れない関係単に因縁の中というだけじゃなくてとても密接につながっていたんだ<笑> yeah 運命のあの日俺たちは世界の秘密に触れてしまったそれはすなわち小鳥の隠していたことにも接することを意味していた。俺は小鳥と共に、鍵に関わることになった。あの時の俺は、諸悪の根源のような相手を倒せば、すべて解決すると思い込んでいた。
だけど実際は<笑>そんな単純な話じゃなかった結局俺と小鳥は狩りを守れず世界の秘密から弾き出されてしまった結果的にそれで俺たちは普通の人生に回帰できた、yeah, ironically. 手近なところで落ち着いてしまったけどだけどなんだかんだでそういうのが一番幸せだったりするのかもなこれも俺にとっての良い記憶だボンド<笑> oh, <no! 笑><笑>どうしてその名前わからないがそれだけ思いついたかなりの思い入れがあるようだあまあ俺に記憶があっても向こうにとっては初対面だ Just up as a butler called Bond It's a little too much on the nose Just tell him you're called Taru 新しい関係を築いていくことになる。Of course, he doesn't look like Kotaru, does he? Like, he kind of looks like him, but he looks different. だから、新しい名で生きていこうと思った。ああ。それはかっこよくないので、ポチではダメだろうか。<笑> no, I love it though. Okay. いいんだ。思い入れ、軽。ところでここは、暖かいな。今は表記だがな。Oh, yeah? 街を離れると寒いんだよ。あれは、そういうことか。街が命の幕に保護されているようだ。Yeah. So, maybe don't cut down the big tree? <笑>当たり前だ。年、ね、々、ね、急激に寒くなっていってるから。ポッチ、自分のことは把握できるああ。俺は、魔物だろ今はお前たち5人と並列に契約することでかりそめの命を得ている、うん、俺の仕事は黒いタキシードを着てお前たちに貸し付くことだなインプットした通り just as we input it they literally just wanted a butler like somewhere deep inside the subconscious she h i r e just pushed the idea of Sakuya onto, the, onto all of them 群抜の浸透率そしてお前たちの護衛もしろというわけだそうよどうやらお前なしかし丁重に断る<笑><笑> no. んえんん何<笑> Can you do that? <笑>それは俺の仕事じゃない俺はもっとビッグなことをやる俺には特別な力がある召喚酔いから覚めた途端就職したくない大学生みたいなことを言い出したわ。Yeah, I mean, to be fair, he probably could deliver on that. というか、使い魔が主人に逆らうのって初めて見ます。だから人間型はやめようって言ったんさ、私のおかんになるからって。Your mom? あなたのおかんわがまま。その問題発言についてはまた後で論じるとして。ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、証明してくださいよというかお前の力って何まだわからない<笑>ただ木を削り出して生まれたものとしての自負のようなものを感じるおそらく命さえ注いでくれれば俺はそれをクリエイティブに加工してどんなことだってやれる何を言ってるのかわからない I don't think he knows what he's saying. じゃあ空を自由に飛べるんですか多分な翼も生えてないみたいだけど必要なら穂だって生やす<笑>本当なんか変ですよこれ He's messing with you <笑>試してみればいいのよぼっち早速私たちをどこかに運んでみなさい
たやすい願いだが今は5人分の雫しか与えられていないこれでは無理だじゃあどれだけいるんだ最低でも万人単位との契約が取れなければ<笑>とても届かない1万人単位って燃費めちゃめちゃ悪いそれだけ集めてどこまで行ける太陽系の外にだって行ってみせるさ There we go. なんで宇宙に行かないといけないんですかなぜって we do. さあなんでかなそれは人類の仕事だ本当にそんなことできるのあ,あ Yes, it is. 起業して一口いくらで契約書を募れば。ああ、これは、literally like, あ、はい、どうやって10000人のコントラクトを募れば。うん、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、ジェニーは、全員が不思議そうな顔で俺を見たおっと口に出しちまった前のことを話しても仕方がないみんなは今新しい時代を生きている俺だけの良い記憶として心にしまっておくことにする best, 失礼話の続きをどうぞうんちゃんとりあえず5人分の運賃でどこらへんまで行けるのさ<笑>ドライバーそれだとあの辺りまでだねポイスターロック10フィートウェイアポイントアップワードそれでナチュラルサテライトアバーバーシンスインデスカイオーダムーンそうきたかどうしますどうせ嘘でしょうけどテストしてみようよどうせ嘘だろうけど He might not be able to come back. できたら面白そう嘘かもしれないけどポッチ時間はどれくらいかかるのどうせ嘘なのは分かっているけど何ほんのひとっとびだよいや、yeah. 命と引き換えにやるべきことをやったそのつもりだったそうしたらこんなことになったいや、yeah. 飛んだ余生もあったもんだ。Not, not a terrible way, honestly. しかも、全員と一遍に再会なんてな。I love it. It's really cute. 切っても切れない縁。ということか。だけどこの場に、一人だけいないものがいる。かかり。天を見上げる。かがり今の俺は魔物だから人間としての人生は必要ない、like、I could try and find her. かつてかがりが追い求めた良い記憶の実現に全てを捧げてもいいんだそのために羽ばたかなければならない And so now he'll live in like eternal servitude, constantly called up again and again as a familiar, especially now the world understands it. And eventually he can push them. たとえこの星のすべてを吸い上げることになっても、俺にはその力がある。古代人は樹木を削り出して船を作り、その船になることが。今の俺にはできるはずだ。Wait, so he thinks he's gonna make himself into a kind of spaceship? 樹木の魔物となった俺には。ああ、OK。少女たちを一人一人見つめる。この花ルチア、大鳥千はや、中津しずる、千里あかね、神戸小鳥、たくさんの因果を超えて、みんなここにいる。あとは、あいつを迎えに行くだけだ。さあ、今日の活動を始めよう。活動内容は。Yeah?What?How are we getting to the moon, bro?How are we getting there?
Oh, we don't get to find out. Oh well. Dang. What an awesome way to end. I didn't. I really was. I didn't think it was gonna be the last episode. Oh, I have so many thoughts. I have so many thoughts. I've got to get my notes out. We have to do a. We have to do a freaking like rap party. Wow. I am very excited for this rap party. Okay, so I will plan to do the rap party a week from now, but um, I will be starting a shortly. I'll be starting to do uh my 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 job will shift from day to night shift, and when I do. I will uh, not be able to do my rap parties on the day. I'll have to move them all to like Mondays. So this will be one of the, probably the last rap party that I do on the same day that the video would normally come out. So we'll keep that in mind. Aww. I like how the whole time he was the tree. Oh, look at that. Is that the this, this rebuilt city, but now it has a, a wall around it? Oh, it's, not, it's the, just the, like, the bubble, essentially. Beautiful. I have so many thoughts to share about this. I'm so excited. And I have to make some pretty big decisions, because I need to decide what to do. I gotta say, Wednesday's gonna start becoming, I'm gonna call it a cat of a catch day. Aw. Hey, Mamiya. Aiko. She's here, and... <sighs> um, gosh darn it, best friend, best friend dude. Aw, like everyone's here. The the girl who is going to become Akane's successor. Oh, um, Mido and, and the other crazy people, right? Beautiful. Yeah, an ice aged world. Yeah, it looks rough. Oh. Oh, no, it's just continuing the trailer. Okay. Yoshino! That's the name. Yoshino. Why did it take so long for me to get to it? I just caught up in everything else. Okay. We'll see if there's anything at the end. Oh, I just realized, like, it's actually a story, like, it's kind of continuing. Like, it's it's reminiscing about the past, but it showed him, like, the girls walking, like, on the moon. Like, or the surface of the moon, like, on the bridge to the moon.
I hope they find that girl on the moon. If someone makes I hope they make their way to where she's crouched all alone. And stop by for a visit. I pray that for that from the bottom of my heart. <gasps> a little plant on the moon. Dang. Aww. Let's go rescue moon girl, Kagari. That's so crazy. Key. Oh my gosh, what an ending. Oh, yep, here we go. Look at that. It makes you wonder, if you had the ability of using familiar technology and superhumans, like, it might make space travel a lot more possible. Especially familiars. Familiars could probably make conceptual sp uh, st uh, spacecraft pretty well if you knew how to make it work. Oh, okay. So looks like the, the rest of the trailer's here, so... Unless something really cool pops up. Ah, uh, Beru! I see you there! Uh, but yeah, unless something else pops up, um... I'll, I'm gonna, well, I'll skip this part. This is beautiful. But we'll get to the end of like the, like the, like the second credits and see if there's anything at the end. There it is. In memory of Car Carlos Conjurer. I can't say that last name. I'm guessing it's somebody who worked on the localization, though. And anything else? Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah, they got to the moon. Somehow. Like they are alive here. And he looks like he's in a suit. Then the end. One little plant on the moon. That would be insane if you found that. It'd be like, what what is happening? Oh my gosh, what a story. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely, one of the best stories. So many good vi visual novels. Why Why are there so many? Why do so few people play them? They're so good. Here we go. We're back to the title screen. Amazing. Amazing. Rewrite clear, complete tear. I just got a ton of achievements. Oh my gosh, I saw them all blip. So, dang. So good. Amazing. Oh, what an experience. I've cried, all my eye tears are gone. I've drained the, 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 I've drained the reservoir. Oh, what a great experience. What a finale, what a finale. Oh, I genuinely wasn't really prepared tonight. I didn't think it was going to be a finale. I was just like, I'll just go record for an hour. It'll be fine. Two hours later, here we are. What an amazing story. Now, I'm going to have to debate because I was saying it before, but I got cut off by, by realizing, oh, there's like stuff happening. Um, So, I'm going to do a wrap party next Wednesday evening, probably 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I'll, I'll post a link. It'll pop up in your feed. You can like put a reminder in if you want to come. 
Um, I'll just be gonna be talking. I essentially have my list of like my thoughts about everything. Um, I'll go over all the routes and kind of my thoughts on them. Uh, you can interject or talk about stuff. Remember, I'm gonna also be covering full like spoilers of every route. So like we'll talk about every single one of them. It'll be really fun. And then when we get to that finale, I'll, I'll say my 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 top things. Like I'll say like what I think. Like who I thought ultimately became best girl by the end of the story of the story, uh, best boy, uh, and just in general, like what my general my overall thoughts are. And at the end, I will by between now and then, I will decide what we're gonna do next. But I will say this: um, Wednesdays are gonna end up becoming a bit of a catch, um, a catch day. It's kind of like my ultimate, just kind of do whatever I'm feeling like type of visual novel day. Because Mondays I dedicate. I've dedicated to, it was Muv Love, and now it's switching to Higarashi Umineko, and I'll probably go back to Muv Love after that, and then when that's done, maybe we'll start another big series there, I'm not sure, but that's like, we're talking year, years from now, so we don't need to worry about that right now. Fridays is the fan selection, so essentially, everyone, the, the, the patrons and the members get a kind of help me cultivate a list based on like what they think is most important and using input from the general like discord group where I have a, like a place where you can put recommendations. Um, so like, that's kind of how I compile like the short list. And then the short list goes out to the entire community and everyone gets an opportunity to vote, you know, democracy in action. Wednesdays are meant to be a bit of a catch. And that's the thing is Wednesdays are going to be this kind of two part spot where I want to cover games that need to be rounded off. So um, a good example is uh, Mamiya was a fantastic little shorter, like a smaller, lesser known visual novel, but genuinely a fantastic one. Um, and it turns out that when you when you get the game, it ended like it had essentially two uh, sections, like part like like book one, book two. And it turns out that book three was on the way and I didn't know that until I finished it that part has come out now so i'd love to go finish that because it ended on a really like climactic like i want to see how it ends type of situation so i want to go do that um there's also uh an old series like something that was back that i started way back when i started the channel which was the sunrider series the first two books of that are free the third one came out and it was amazing and the fourth one's come out since then i haven't had a chance to go back to it um, another one is Pixel Fade. They did uh, Ace Academy, which is still one of my favorite visual novels just because of um, the mechanics they tried using in it that I wish somebody would try again because I like the idea of time decision making to kind of put the pressure on because I feel like that gives you that kind of rush of like, oh, I got to make a choice. You don't get to just sit and contemplate for an hour if you want to. Uh, but then they also did... Um, uh, Oh gosh, darn it! Like I'm, I'm blanking because my my thoughts are all rewrite. Anyway, they have another game coming out, so I probably want to cover it at some point. But I definitely don't see it being the the big stuff's going to end up winning on the Fan Friday stuff, like the the big name stuff, like Ruta Grisaya and and that. So we do that, and then of course there's rewrite um, Harvest Festival, which is the rewrite story. That it's the altered fable of rewrite, where it's essentially I don't know this like the background to it, but it's supposed to be this idea of like, hey, what if Kothru just got to have a relationship with somebody, and it wasn't filled with death and despair, or at least it had a happy ending. Uh, so I definitely want to get to that. So the question's really going to become: Do I start playing catch up right away and kind of put a, put a rewrite to the side? Do I go ahead and jump right into a rewrite Harvest Festival since it's, it kind of feels like it just rolls right into it? And that makes sense, but. I don't want to get stuck in anything for Wednesdays. Wednesday's supposed to be a cleanup spot. And then also the other thing Wednesday's going to be, I also want Wednesdays to kind of lean towards um, indie type titles. Like visual novels that don't have a massive following, that are that are new on the market from developers that are, you know, smaller. Again, that's kind of the, the people who made Sunrider, uh, the people like, I think that's called Love Lab or Love Live. And then... Um, Pixel Fade, again, like, it's a Western developer that's making visual novels, and they're making great games. Are they, like, top, top tier? No, not yet, but they're getting better, and I hope they'll continue to. And I want to always make a spot where we cover smaller, lesser-known indie titles in the visual novel space, especially for developers that are just starting out. And so it's going to catch some of these things that have fallen through the cracks over time that I want to go back to, but then I also want to make sure we're covering the smaller visual novels because they've been some of my favorite. Look at Seabed. It's still probably in the top three of my visual novels I've enjoyed. Like, it's so good. 
and I never would have known if I hadn't been making room for the smaller titles on the channel. So I'm always going to want to make a spot for that. So while that might take a bit to get to, I do ultimately want Wednesdays to feel a bit more in the indie space or to catch like, you know, little bits and pieces that um, just I can't fit into the slots anywhere else. But yeah, enough rambling about that. I got a lot to think about. I've always been interested in taking your input, so leave comments in the if you want on the on the video or go to the Discord. That's an easier place for talking about what comes next. Because I imagine this, like these comment sections, are going to be filled with just people talking about how they feel about the ending now that it's come. So I I, I don't mind if if you like feel like you're going to get lost down there. Just go to the Discord. I'll see it there too. But yeah. In a week, we'll have the wrap party. I'll have my notes. We'll do a live presentation. We'll just talk about everything. And then we'll come back together and we'll figure out what we're doing next. So, yeah. But rewrite was a amazing. Absolutely in the top 10. I don't think I ever will hash out a specific top 10 list because I don't want to be, feel like p things are jo jockeying for different positions. Rewrite was amazing, though. Genuinely a f one of the fa most fantastic stories I've ever read. And, man, I'm just so lucky to live in a life and a time where I can just be drowning in stories that feel life-changing and I it just it's like banger after banger after banger every time so good but yeah we'll have to get to all that later thank you all so much thank you for being a part of the channel thank you so much for joining me on the journey through rewrite and whatever journeys we come through next I hope you'll stick around for if you liked this series and you want to see more I'm doing some live ones, uh, Higarashi on Monday, I just started. I also just started Chaos um, Head on Fridays. I'm currently blazing through the uh, Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky series, which has been phenomenal. Uh, I also got a good backlog. I've done some classic games like RPGs, like uh, Yakuza 0 and Persona 5. I also did some fun challenge runs through Knights of the Republic 1 and 2 just because they're games I know really, really well, and it was fun to do like a really interesting challenge for those. Uh, I also have done other visual novels, some that you've heard of. Like I've done pretty much every Muv Love that's been published. I did House of Fata Morgana, Seabed, someone I highly recommend if you've never read it before, go check it out. Um, I've also done some smaller titles that you've probably never seen. There's like, there's actually uh, one of the series, the first series I published on the channel was Sound of Drop Fall into Poison. That series probably still has like 15 views per video because nobody knows it exists on the channel but hey if you ever want to see how far i've come along in, in editing and camera quality and audio quality go watch those those suckers were terrible but I'm, i i love that they're there they're a good marker for the progress i've made and honestly sound of drop fall into poison really solid visual novel it's a really good first one i think for the channel anyway thank you so much I appreciate you all. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Let's all go cry and breathe and laugh and have fun and just, you know, live life. So until the next video you watch with me or happen to see me in next, I'll see you there.